right. So uh, welcome, John. Um, good to finally have you on. Thank um, you, Herman. I just thought I'd start out with a basic question that I ask most of the people that I interview, which is, can you tell me, tell us about your uh, um, path to orthodoxy and what sure. are maybe some of the sign po posts along the way? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Herman. It's uh, your show is continuously uh, sort of lodged in my brain. The conversations don't leave easily. So to be able to be on here is a big deal. And I appreciate it. And we've known each other for a little bit. Saw each other out in various places, LA, around the world. So let me just, basically, uh, Islam in a weird way. And then, of course, the foundational teachings of Anglican Christianity through my parents led me into uh, orthodoxy. I was in Peace Corps, uh, living and serving in, in Mali, which is in West Af French West Africa, and a bit upside down and confused, really sick for at, at times. And uh, but watching uh, a very small village of depends how you count it because there were really three villages in one, where they're about about 900 people in my village, probably about 4,500 in the immediate vicinity, no running water, no electricity, and then Islam. And Mali is a very traditional um, black African country. So there are a lot of African countries that have, quote, Islam, but Mali is proud of, they took it in the 1200s. It's a really interesting history. But long story short, they were matching up what they profess to the activities of the day so of course there's the five you know the, there's the prayer tradition five times a day which you know in orthodoxy you see right all kind you, you see in the liturgical cycle you see various prayer moments but we don't often see them unless we're in a monastic setting but they're there and they're taught to us but i was an orthodox i was raised anglican or episcopalian and now these cats were stopping taxis uh I remember I was like trying to go on a date, but the date she wouldn't go because it was time for prayer. And that's a whole nother conversation, uh, but of dating, but long story short, it was really beautiful to watch the days of the week be determined by the, the undulations of Islam. And as a Protestant growing up, I heard cool stories on Sunday like about silos and how you shouldn't build extra silos because your souls demanded of you. And then you would Monday would be about what college you were going to go to and how successful you could get and the right kind of connections. And then Sunday, and there was a lot of good talk. And somehow the, the, the Christianity I was raised on was somehow about like being good at the world. And so when I saw uh, my Muslim friends, sort of having their lives dictated rather than dictating to their faith, it was very impressive. And I was reading Dostoevsky in a mud hut in the dark. And so that's also pretty powerful. Came home and um, I found myself in an Orthodox church. I was trying to, uh, a woman said, meet me there. And well, you know, maybe I'll, you seem nice. I'll, and I met, I met her at this Orthodox church, a Russian church in San Francisco on Green Street, OCA. And from that moment on, Basically, I got yelled at by a yaya for sitting down uh, on numerous occasions during that first liturgy. And I didn't know this, what this babushka was doing and why she was mad at me. I went down afterwards because, of course, I wanted to pursue my, my date. And uh, the priest was super interesting. And I was a little irritated. I had been yelled at. And I said, that was uh, unusual, Father. What did I do wrong? It was kind of annoying to have her yell at me. And then he went, well, it's kind of annoying when people don't stand up when they're faced with the creator of the universe. <laughs> and he was straightforward. Don't worry. You stand before the creator. This is what you do. We don't sit. And I was just like, wait, this is that. This is it. This is the Christian matchup moment where like the things you say you believe are matching with the things that you do. And then I had this moment where I'm like, hey, this is like those Muslims I knew. And the Muslims in Mali took care of me. You have to understand there was deep affection. They, they really treated me like a family, like family and took care of me. So 
all of that affection, of course, and the, the, the really beloved teachings of my mother and father, right? Growing up, I was a Christian. Um, uh, led me to eventually get chrismated in the Antiochian archdiocese out there in California. So you were the, the first in the family to find orthodoxy? My mother and father at the same time. So my dad was an uh, Episcopal priest at the time who was brought in by the Antiochians and all in one shot, chrismated and uh, ordained. And then I joined them at that event. And then my brother later, and then not too much later, but later. And then my sister quite a bit later, I think eight years. Eight years she... Uh, and uh, in, in reading Dostoevsky, was that... Uh, that that did that not come kind of together in your mind until until you went to church or or uh, right what, what kind of what kind of work was going on as you were reading Dostoevsky? Yeah, that's a good question. So I fashioned myself for whatever reason as a as a artist writer guy and Peace Corps. One of the beauties of this kind of work, which we can talk about later, is that he you do get the ascetic quiet moments in, in Peace Corps and any other kind of work like this. You do get a lot of reflection time. And so I fashioned myself as like knowledgeable. And so what I wanted to do was actually read every classic book. And that's what I was trying to do. Peace Corps had a nice library in the city that was about five hour bicycle ride away. So I would come back with books and just rip through them, like almost like an assignment to myself. And then I hit crime and punishment and then, and then I hit uh, House of the Dead. And then you started, I started to realize this guy, this guy is doing this thing, which is there's somehow all this joy in this darkness. And it, it felt really relevant to my experience, which was I found all this joy, but I was in a type of ascetic struggle in Peace Corps. Sometimes Peace Corps isn't like that. Sometimes Peace Corps puts you in a city, you got a car or whatever, but mine was really off the grid. My, you know, I didn't have electricity or running water for two years. So it was doing things to me. And Dostoevsky was accompanying me on that, that ascetic journey perfectly, which is like, oh, he gets it. He gets what I'm doing, which is a joy in the absence or, or, or the struggle. So, yeah. And then he came around later after I uh, became Orthodox then I was like, like you said, oh, oh, he's that. Oh, he's to this new faith. Oh, he's informing, you know, culture in Russia about who they are. And I like that, of course. And then I ended up in a real core parish. And then, then I realized I was reading somebody all those years ago that everybody, I, and then I became aware, you know, of who he was to the Orthodox. Yeah. 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 But Neat. it continues to resonate, right? It's crazy, especially today. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Yeah, um, so uh, thank you for sharing your your, your journey. Um, and we'll uh, continue along here, go more deeply into what, you're, what you've been doing since then and, and what you're up to these days. Um, Did ears burn out those words? Did a voice whisper absurd? Did your mind comprehend and ask if you'd last till the end? 